This is Arlene, and you are listening to Durian ASEAN. Uh, this is our um, ABC dialogue, and we'll be having a discussion on the Selangor MB crisis. Are they, are they in the verge of a breakup? Uh, together with me is uh, Dr. O. E. San. He is uh, with the School of Rajan Ratnam, and he, uh, he will be sharing with us his view. So, how are you? Hi, good morning, Arlene. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, so uh, to start off our discussion today, maybe you can share with us uh, uh, and introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Oi San and I'm now a senior fellow at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies at uh, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. But I'm actually a Malaysian. I just happen to work in Singapore and I look at Malaysian politics. I look at the politics of uh, Southeast Asia. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the development right now, politically in Malaysia, is the issue regarding on the uh, Menteri Besar or the Chief Minister in Selangor, uh, Kali Ibrahim. Um, there's, a, there's an accusation that he is committing corruption, but at the same time, there's also this other perspective that PKR is trying to remove him by hook or by crook to replace him with someone else. But to start off our conversation on the, the Selangor MB crisis itself, maybe you can give a bit of a background on how this issue developed into something like right now we are witnessing. Well, uh, Mr. Khalid Ibrahim has uh, always been a very uh, distinct figure in, uh, in his party. Um, PKR, as we know, the, what was formed with, uh, for example, uh, those who left UMNO together with uh, social activists uh, and various other uh, groupings uh, in, in society. And mi uh, Mr. Khalid Ibrahim, on the other hand, or Tansri Khalid Ibrahim, is a corporate uh, figure. Uh, when he joined PKR uh, at the at the, almost at the eve of uh, well, a few months before the 2008 elections, a lot of people were, were also uh, quite wondering because uh, it was uh, not very usual uh, for a corporate figure mm -hmm. uh, to, to join uh, uh, at that time the opposition party. Since he became um, a Menteri Besar of uh, Selangor and, uh, after the 2008 uh, general election when uh, Pakatan won the Selangor state uh, uh, government, uh, I think there is a sort of a dichotomy uh, between uh, a, a lot of uh, people um, in, in Selangor who, who feel that uh, Khalid did uh, shape up Selangor, making uh, the administration more efficient and, by the way, reducing a lot of uh, corruption by uh, local officials and so on. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, I think within his party, there are those who uh, perceive him as uh, not being so-called helpful to the party, um, because I, I think a lot of uh, a lot of people in the PKR uh, who are formerly from Amno, they are used to that kind of uh, sort of blurring of lines between the the government uh, uh, or an administration and uh, and the party. <laughs> Can you of, specify uh, yeah. what? What do you mean by blur, bl blurring of lines? Like, what kind of action usually they would do that would mm -hmm. be overcrossing the line between what is party and what is state government? Well, for for, for example, you will see uh, in Barista National, uh, typically uh, the the use of uh, national machinery or state machineries in in those states where Barista is a government uh, to further the end of the ruling party. That usually is quite common, and this includes, uh, for example, using uh, state functions to promote uh, the ruling party's uh, political ends, as well as sometimes uh, even uh, uh, doling out projects, for example, uh, to, uh, to, to, to make sure that the party has income, the party can, can go forward, and so on. And I think there are, there, there are people, or there, there, there are those within uh, PKR who feel, who feel that uh, Khalid on that front has not done uh, enough, and therefore uh, perhaps a different figure to, uh, to, to, to replace him would be more ideal for the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is actually the current 
power dynamics within PKR. Who has the upper end and who is now in the verge of like uh, not knowing what is he or his or her fate? I, I think that's uh, exactly the, the, the problem. Uh, PKR, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, has various factions. And these uh, different factions, they are, uh, for example, ideologically very different, uh, mm -hmm. somewhat even opposing. There are those uh, who came out of UMNO, uh, for them it's a, further, uh, it's a furthering of their political struggles, uh, sort of UMNO style. There are those who came from uh, uh, the NGO side of society and they have a lot of ideals. So the, there's this constant uh, clashing of ideas, of uh, ends and means and, and so on within the, the party here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this would be normal to consider that that's... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in a political party, not everyone thinks the same and not everyone has the same amount of power when it comes to the influence. But when it comes to the biggest, uh, I would say, um, s um, blockage for Khalid Ibrahim's uh, mm -hmm. power to retain within PKR, would it be mm -hmm. Azmin Ali? Oh, yeah, that would, that would certainly be a, a right candidate for that uh because As Asmin Ali uh, followed Amno, uh, sorry, followed Anwar and came out of uh, Amno, and uh, he would be a sort of embodiment of those uh, who left Amno and 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 joined uh, PKR. You see, from their point of view, there's nothing wrong, for example, with uh, more aggressively and more proactively using government machinery to promote the ends of the ruling party, for example, or in some instance, uh, even uh, you know, make sure that uh, the, the, the party would have uh, uh, enough incomes to sustain itself and, and so on. Um, Khalid Ibrahim apparently, um, I think allegations of corruptions against him, I think that is certainly exaggerated. In fact, I think he is often uh, accused of exactly the opposite. Oh, of, really? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Of not, uh, shall I put it very mildly, not doing enough to uh, enhance the party's coffers, for example. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, since you mentioned yeah. about the corruption charges that huh? uh, PKR is uh, push, uh, pressing over him, I just want to mention that uh -huh. um, uh, Tan Kale Ibrahim has been accused by PKR uh, mm -hmm. on a few, I think, uh, the, the charges regarding on the... Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's on the mm -hmm. Kumplan Gatri Berhad? Oh, yeah. Th yeah. Th those, uh, I think, well, he was a uh, CEO of uh, Gatri uh, mm -hmm. back, in, back, back, back in his corporate uh, days. Um, you see, it, uh, in all these uh, state-owned uh, enterprises such as uh, Gatri and so on, uh, from time to time, the inevitably, there will be some sort of misuse or abuse of power. Uh, sometimes uh, by those very high up, sometimes uh, by those even very uh, far down the, the line. And I think to sort of dig up all these uh, former allegations against him uh, without a lot of substantial proof, I think that, um, that, that that's... It smells very fishy to <laughs> but me. But they have a 40-page <laughs> document highlighting <laughs> all the misconduct of uh, Khalid Ibrahim in terms of mm -hmm. dealing with uh, money mm -hmm. and shares. So mm -hmm. uh, w would that be something that the public would um, sort of trust in terms of all this uh, evidence, so-called? Well, not really, because come on, welcome to the 1980s and 1990s corporate Malaysia, where everybody <laughs> had a good time wallowing in uh, stocks and, uh, in, you know, like high-rising stocks and, and so on. I mean, uh, you, you ask the current uh, crop of uh, corp uh, corporate figures, uh, who can, uh, you know, like in the case of, uh, you know, who, who can sort of uh, point at others and say, I'm clean, you know. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it's part and parcel of what happened during those times. And, um, mm -hmm. But if it's um, happening yeah. quite some time ago, why do you only show it now? Oh yeah, because it's internal party uh, struggle. Actually, the, um, what is happening now the sort of uh, reminds me of about, if I remember correctly, about 15 years ago or, or 14 years ago, what happened in, uh, in Israel in um, in the Likud party, at that time the ruling party, Likud party, 
there was this uh, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, uh, mm-hmm. not a very popular figure uh, to, to some. Um, but then he had a change of heart. He was a very hardline guy. He had a change of uh, heart trying to reach out to Palestinians and so on. Um, and then his own party went against him. Huh? And then and then Ariel Sharon had to uh, leave his own party, the Likud party, and form another party called the Kadima party. But of course, uh, he... Uh, since then, he fell into a coma and just passed away recently. But I mean, uh, it, it sort of reminds me of, of that uh, that uh, a prominent figure in a political figure in the public eye uh, was sort of despised by his own party. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't know what would uh, Khalid's next move be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, in fact, he made a statement that he mm-hmm. is open to anyone who wants to, you know, claim mm-hmm. making accusations accusation about him he mm-hmm. would defend himself regardless like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. whatever accusation is not true mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. him yeah that, that um, you, you see that that's also a little bit of problem with Khalid he's not quite a, a, a politician yeah mm-hmm. he is uh, more like a, a corporate senior manager or CEO so but when do it you comes need to, uh, to be uh-huh. to have that politician um, mm-hmm personality mm-hmm. to rule over a state i mean is that necessary or uh, you just it, need to do yeah. your job well mm-hmm. that's enough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes and no yes in the sense that you need to be an inspirational figure you know you need to be like anwa you need to uh, you need to be uh, very uh, charismatic when people look at you it uh, it invokes confidence and and so on so that's the that's uh, uh, the public political side. And then there's a behind the scene political side, namely, you need to be able to uh, distribute all the largesse of, uh, of, of politics evenly within your party. And of course, number, only then, number three comes to be you are a very good public administrator and so on. I think uh, Khalid did the third thing, being a very good public administrator. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he wasn't very good at either a public political figure or sort of a behind-the-scene uh, deal maker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, why? I, I just want to know, like, what mm-hmm. is the agenda behind uh, PKR mm-hmm. trying to remove Khalid Ibrahim from his seat? Other than probably he's not good enough of a politician. Like, has he not done enough in terms of Fos Lango? Mm. I, I think, um, uh, of course, the, 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 all these uh, different selfishly political ends I, I cannot attest to. But at least uh, there's, there's one thing. Namely, you, you see the Malaysian uh, opposition um, has been sort of wallowing uh, in the opposition for about, let's say, 15, 16 years since the Anwar arrest in 1998. And uh, now that um, you rule, uh, you, you, you rule the perhaps the most wealthy state uh, in in the country, and yet you are not uh, using that advantage uh, to sort of enhance your party's uh, working capability, your party's coffers, and so on. That, to, I think, to to some PKR uh, activists, is is, uh, is something which is unforgivable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, another another area that I want to mm-hmm. touch on is Khalid mm-hmm. Ibrahim's influence outside of PKR. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. with, with the I think the infamous uh, past WhatsApp leak, it shows that uh, even mm-hmm. I mean the 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 their coalition members uh, like uh, DAP mm-hmm. and PAS, mm-hmm. as you see, are mm-hmm. also uh, a bit divided on this issue. But what what is your view on this? Well, t- um, n- number one, because uh, PKR holds the most seats in uh, Selangor, so uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, P- PKR holds the most say in Selangor. Mm-hmm. So naturally, it's uh, up to PKR to uh, to choose it, uh, it to, to choose who wants to be the the MB and, and so on. But the point is, uh, PAS and uh, DAP. Uh, DAP they also make up a significant number of seats in PKR. So without their support, I mean, if you really vote for um, for an MP, if you really invoke a vote of no confidence and so on, you need the support of uh, the DAP and uh, PAS and and so on. And uh, apparently in their views, uh, he has done quite a 
good job as a well at least as a public administrator yeah mm-hmm. and in uh, fact uh, there's a conversation that mm-hmm. DAP and PAS might want to pull out from the coalition but what do you think I mean that it seems like even within uh, DAP and PAS they, they are pretty divided in terms of whether Ibrahim uh, uh, Khalid Ibrahim should be uh, in the seat as an MB or not do you well, think uh-huh. what is your view on this well, to pull out of, uh, of a coalition and risk uh, losing your majority in the state assembly and thereby becoming opposition again, I think that is a huge gamble. I don't think uh, DAP and PAS, you know, after some initial uh, uh, initial vending of uh, anger and so on, would uh, would really go for that, uh, because the overwhelming thing is, of course. Uh, still retaining um, the majority, and at this point, it's a uh, more than two-third majority of, uh, of of the Pakatan rule in uh, Selangor. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah. But what about the views of the past Central Committee member, Dr. Muhammad Zuhri, uh, Zuhdi Mazuki, when he mm-hmm. he gave this scenario where mm-hmm. PAS should team up with AMNO to support Khalid? Do Do you think that is something that is part of the past? Um, agenda, or it's just him alone? Well, there, there, there is within past, of course, just like within uh, PKR, several different factions and camps. And uh, Mr. Mazuki, I think he uh, happened to represent uh, the, the faction within uh, past uh, who are friendlier to, uh, to AMNO than, uh, than some other factions. Um, I mean, just like within PKR as well, there is... Uh, so we say a more pro amno faction mm-hmm. and then the more pro uh, you know the Pakatan faction. Um, you, you see, all this uh, all this would have been very normal. I mean that within a party or different sections and so on. If you are in a truly democratic uh, political system, unfortunately, mm-hmm. in our political uh, system, um, we are all the political parties in our countries, whether it's ruling party or opposition party, they adopt a so-called Leninist uh, type of system. Can you explain more? Yeah, Leninist system in the sense that uh, uh, powers are to be centralized, uh, power are to be centralized and not uh, 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 democratized. And, and um, so, so in that sense, everybody wants to. Uh, sorry, all the factions they will fight to, with each other uh, in order to grab at uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the the grip on the centralized power of a, of a party. Um, whereas, uh, for example, in the in the United States, um, you see, like the uh, Democratic Party or Republican Party, they can't even fire their own. Uh, uh, members, they they don't even have the power to have like disciplinary committee and firing members and so on. Anybody can claim himself herself to be Republican or Democrat, and who is to be, for example, the candidate for the to represent the party in the general election is again chosen by directly by the party members, huh? mm-hmm. by those who claim themselves to be party members, and not by some sort of central committee and, and, and so on. So in that, in that kind of system, uh, all these different factions is a fact of life and, uh, and it's a very healthy debate on ideas. In our system, however, whether you're opposition or ruling party, it becomes a sort of contest towards uh, grabbing the centralized uh, power grip and thereby sometimes it can become very ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it it can. Uh Uh, We will continue our conversation uh, later on. We will touch more on uh, the what's the way forward, and also in terms of your view uh, on Khalid Ibrahim and PKR, and even uh, those within other actors within PKR. Return with uh, our guest for today, which is uh, Dr. O Isan, and as uh, early on we discussed about the internal politics of PKR, the fate of Ibrahim, uh, Khalid Ibrahim, and also um, uh, the different uh, supporters and people against uh, Khalid Ibrahim's um, as the MB, the current MB as well. So the way forward, as we all know, um, PKR has. Uh, s- 
has already uh, released the 40 pages um, corruption charges against Khalid Ibrahim and at the same time uh, it seems like they want to release it to the public instead of going through the proper channel which is to report it to the M um, to the MACC um, I'm just wondering like with this kind of move would PKR lose the credibility that they have built you know throughout the decades as the people's party I think, of course, uh, PKR is, uh, in a sense, making a political gamble here. Uh, for example, by releasing uh, all these uh, documents of uh, allegations, uh, they are trying, of course, to portray the party as one which uh, is indeed very clean and would go after even one of its own members and a very prominent members uh, if there's uh, allegation of uh, corruption and and, and so on. Um, but I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, two things. One is I think uh, uh, the normal slang or uh, citizens' uh, uh, liking and trust for um, uh, Khalid Ibrahim, I don't think will be dented a lot by, by these uh, allegations, the so-called 40 page uh, uh, allegations. And, um, and another thing uh, is, of course, um, if you look at uh, whether people will be more prone to support PKR after this uh, Khalid uh, saga, well, the, um, people support the Pakatan actually not so much because they like the Pakatan. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of people do not like a lot of uh, past, uh, more hardline uh, policies, but still they vote for past. Um, because they feel that it's a means to end the uh, more than a half a century rule by uh, BN. You, know? um, you, you see this kind of trend uh, around the world, people voting for the opposition, not so much because they like the opposition, but because they don't like the incumbent party. Mm -hmm. you know? In fact, <laughs> uh, Khalid Ibrahim mentioned in one of his uh, uh, event, uh, one of the events that he attended mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if... Uh, if PKR ousted him from uh, the, as mm -hmm. being the Menteri Besar for Selangor, mm -hmm. it might risk lose uh, Selangor to Barisan National. Would you agree with that statement? Oh, yeah, I, I think that is certainly a, a, a possibility. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, because uh, you know, if pass and so on, if they follow suit, uh, if they uh, sort of uh, rally around uh, Khalid Ibrahim. And then they combine with, uh, let's say, Amno, and then with one or two, uh, of course, Khalid Ibrahim must have one or two supporters among the many assembly members. Mm -hmm. Then they can form a simple majority, you know. They can form a simple majority and then indeed uh, form the next uh, Selangor government. And uh, for a lot of, uh, of uh, businessmen, for example, the, the good days to come back, the good days where we can grease the hands of, uh, you know, a, a lot of. Uh, a, a, a lot of officials and so on and get all your projects going yeah those good days will be coming back yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. let's let's focus on the next Menteri Besar uh -huh. we, if if uh, you know PKR will be mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. outstirring uh, Khalid uh -huh. Ibrahim from his seat okay. as the Menteri okay. Besar of Selangor uh -huh. would Wan Aziza be the next candidate that all uh -huh. Uh, parties uh, and also the public would be agreeable on? Well, of course, the public, uh, as usual, adored uh, Wan Aziza because you know, simply she is an adorable figure, a nice person, and uh, uh, at least until now, not tainted by uh, any serious allegations of impropriety and, and, and so on. Uh, and of course, she is Anwar's uh, wife. and. Um, yeah, so the public, I think, would be uh, hard-pressed to, to choose between the, the not liking of uh, Khalid Ibrahim being uh, sag, and on the other hand, the new MB being uh, Wan uh, Aziza. Um, I, I think PKI is uh, sort of betting that uh, we want Aziza to be in support as a new MB. The public anger towards uh, Khalid being the... Uh, sort of unceremoniously removed. Uh, I, I think the, the public anger will not be that that uh, that great uh, if Wan Aziza were the 
next uh, MB here, mm -hmm. as opposed to some other figures. Dude, you know? but, but I can't help to see that, mm -hmm. this is my personal view, mm -hmm. when Aziza being the mm -hmm. wife of Anwar Ibrahim, mm -hmm. she might just be a puppet mm -hmm. as the Menteri Besar of Selangor instead of her governing Menteri Besar I'm so her governing Slango, um, but what is your view on that? I mean, to me personally, I I'm I'm a bit biased. Even though I'm pro woman as the Menteri Besar, I I feel that she uh, she might just be another puppet for Anwar Ibrahim. Um, I I think th being a puppet, I think is an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think she's obviously lacking in uh, you know skills in public administration and and so on. Um, you see, you see uh, Khalid Ibrahim, uh, as I said, the, the three criteria, being a public political figure, being a deal maker, and then be a good public administrator, right? Um, if you look at uh, Wan Aziza, um, does she inspire uh, public confidence? Yes, she does. Uh, that, is she a good deal maker? We don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I would get not quite. Uh, and number three, is she a good public administrator? Again, she doesn't have the experience. So just like uh, Khalid Ibrahim, out of my well, my own three criteria to be an effective politician, uh, both she and Khalid Ibrahim fulfill one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they they have different strengths, but it hap but it just so happens that they don't have all three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Will the election of one Aziza uh, mm -hmm. provide mm -hmm. uh, a much more? Um, Confidence towards uh, the public. I mean, uh, when Aziza, uh, when Aziza being the person that is mm -hmm. well liked mm -hmm. by many people, and mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think she has any like mm -hmm. baggages behind mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. although she might be well liked by other people, but do you think in mm -hmm. the long term it will secure PKR's future in Selangor? Uh, I, well, number one, I think uh, she does inspire public trust and confidence, and 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 so on, as I mentioned. Uh, and number two, I think uh, um, whether Pakatan can hold uh, Selangor or not, I think has a lot to do with uh, whether uh, BN still holds the federal power. You know, mm -hmm. um, if BN continues to hold federal power, then Selangor, as the wealthiest and shall we say uh, most educated. Uh, in the in the union in the in the in our federation would most likely go for a government which is not BN. But mm -hmm. if BN is no more the federal government and Pakatan becomes the federal government, yeah, then the people of Selangor might decide to give uh, BN another chance, you know, just to have a different. Uh, uh, the different choice than the federal government here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you know, during Khalid's uh -huh. time, he uh -huh. managed to have a three billion reserve f uh, for the Selangor's uh -huh. coffer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where do you think the money would be under another Menteri Besar's yeah. hand? Well, the, number one, that that indeed is a credit uh, to his uh, administration that uh, he he sort of accumulated all this uh, reserve. But number two, with a new Menteri Bursa, I think you will see more of this uh, reserve going for projects, going for activities uh, which uh, sort of promote uh, the political ends of the of Pakatan in general and PKR specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind. Uh -huh. Where do you think Azbin Ali's place would be? Uh, would he put up one uh, up notch towards his political ambition, or would it be something that uh, would hamper him? Well, we put yourself or put ourselves in Azmin Ali's uh, shoes. You know, he was uh, Amnor Big Shad, Anwar's political secretary, and so on. And then overnight, huh, sort of, he was deprived of everything. And now, the 16 years later, and we are still talking about uh, Asmin Ali uh, waiting in the wing and <laughs> so on. If you are, I mean, if I am Asmin Ali, of course I will be impatient. You know, I don't know about him. <laughs> I will be uh, all clamoring for me being the Menteri Bursa, right? Yeah. After, yeah, waiting for all these years. And so the, I think it's natural that uh, Asmin's people would clamor for him to... Um, Assume the you know the Menteri Besar ship and 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 so on, um, and I think in general we like to look at healthy political competition. 
we just don't like to see um, you know people besmirching each other you know saying you did this and that uh, 15 years ago 16 years ago because if you were to do that then uh, people could do that to you as well and you have to make sure that your record is similarly clean yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but what about uh, uh-huh. for the other members of mm-hmm. the coalition pass and mm-hmm. dap uh, mm-hmm. are they looking forward to the new menteri besar uh, possibly possibly uh-huh. would be one aziza uh, i i i still think a lot of them uh, would prefer khalid be, uh, being a sort of no nonsense uh, Uh, corporate background sort of public administrator but as i say uh, pkr is a senior partner in the in the coalition in in slango and therefore i think uh, except for past which has I, uh, for me an unexplainable aversion towards women i think uh, dap would sort of go along with uh, whichever is pkr's choice yeah mm-hmm. and yeah. what about the policy uh, that mm-hmm. The new menteri besar would do because uh, with Khalid Ibrahim, mm-hmm. as you see, with the water crisis and all that, he's mm-hmm. actually willing to work with anyone, and he mm-hmm. even mentioned it, including mm-hmm. Barisan National. Uh, mm-hmm. To him, the the most important thing is to get the job done, uh, mm-hmm. to achieve whatever end goal that it would be, mm-hmm. rather yeah. than to choose who should yeah. I work with, you know, for for example. But with uh, mm-hmm. the new menteri besar, which I believe mm-hmm. would be more in. with uh-huh. the uh-huh. central committee's uh-huh. Uh, policy uh-huh. would uh-huh. the person be willing to work with the enemy uh-huh. let's say Barisan National uh-huh. if it gets the job done I would bet with you whoever becomes a menteri besar uh, be it one Aziza or Asmin Ali they will follow the same trend namely when push comes to shove uh, you need to work with the federal government uh, because whether you like it or not they hold the centralized power Malaysia is a very Uh, power-centric, uh, centralized power country. So whether you like it or not, if you uh, sort of uh, fight the central government, uh, well, then you don't get a lot of uh, goodies. Um, a case in point is my own home state of Sabah. Mm-hmm. In the 1980s and early 1990s, we had a we we we, we had a government who is uh, in the federal opposition. I mean, um, and they fought the federal government. And as a result, for almost 10 years, Sabah has almost virtually no development whatsoever. So that is a lesson for all here. Mm-hmm. But what about in Penang? I think they are doing really well. Hey, look at, uh, listen to uh, what uh, Nasri just said. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? I'm happy to work with the Penang government to promote uh, tourism in Penang and so on. Uh-huh. So I think nowadays people are being realistic. You know, politics aside, uh, people are being realistic that I have to get a job done. Because if you don't get the job done, then people will start uh, assigning blame. You know, mm-hmm. and people nowadays uh, they are not stupid. They know that what is state power, what is federal power. So when they assign blames, they will assign accordingly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. What is the uh, way forward? Let's say, mm-hmm. you know, PKR mm-hmm. really needs to improve its credibility after the ousting of Khalid Ibrahim. What is the way forward that PKR should do uh, in order mm-hmm. f- for for them to restore their, uh, the people's faith in them? Well, number one, I think even if they want to uh, so-called oust uh, uh, Khalid Ibrahim, they have to do it properly. You call for a vote of no confidence because... Obviously, in your party, you cannot resolve this, right? Mm-hmm. You cannot make uh, Khalid Ibrahim voluntarily step down. So call for a vote or no confidence and see whether you have that uh, that mandate. If you do, then make sure your new MB uh, would uh, continue to a very efficient administration for the people of uh, Selangor. Uh, make sure he or she is not uh, corrupt and, and so on. And I think uh, because of people's... Um, A lot of people's uh, non-preference for BN. I think they will still retain majority. I mean, uh, Pakatan will still retain majority in Selangor. Yeah. What about to improve the relationship between the the coalition members? Because I think mm-hmm. right now the relationship between PAS, especially mm-hmm. and DAP, mm-hmm. are not really that good. And in fact, there are some factions within these groups that feel that maybe we should just mm-hmm. leave mm-hmm. the coalition. Yeah, the point is uh, when you leave the coalition, then you do what? 
I mean, mm-hmm. uh, do, it, it's not as if uh, just by your own you can form the next uh, either state or federal government. Uh, so uh, whether you like it or not, you have to stay together. Just like in the end, I mean, there are a lot of grumblings from uh, parties in my home state of Sabah, as so in, in, in Sarawak. But um, if you leave the coalition, then what? Uh, you cannot form government by your own. So uh, I think both in BN as well as Pakata, very often it's a marriage of convenience. And mm-hmm. as such, you just need to uh, continue with that kind of uh, so-called political marriage. Yeah. <laughs> political <Yeah>. marriage. <laughs> uh, what are the things that you want to add on in terms of... Uh, Mm-hmm. The, the the situation car, the current situation with the Khalid, Khalid Ibrahim mm-hmm. being pressed mm-hmm. uh, charges for corruption uh, ac- accusation mm-hmm. for corruption and also um, what mm-hmm. what can um, I think mm-hmm. Slango learn out of this? Mm-hmm. I, I think the the main thing the, for both uh, Pakatan and BN to learn from this is uh, is that um, all this old style uh, party maneuvering of uh, you know the seniors within the party deciding who is to be that or this um, i think that is sort of uh, rapidly uh, receding those those uh, the, the the times for all this uh, nowadays we are in a much more open and people oriented society mm-hmm. if you want to change political leaders and so on i think the, the you, you you better consult uh, by means of polling and so on uh, people's opinion more because if you don't do this uh, carefully, while you might uh, satisfy some of your perceived needs in your own political party, you may risk uh, losing uh, the votes, uh, the real people's uh, votes, uh, and thereby you may or may not form the next government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, yeah. uh, glad that you mentioned that. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to raise uh, something that is happening uh, currently in Indonesia. Uh, mm-hmm. As you, I think everyone mm-hmm. know that Jokowi's yep. uh, new cabinet, he wants yeah. the people to choose it for him instead of uh-huh. he choosing it himself, yeah. which I think is something that is revolutionary to have a crowdsourcing uh, president, oh, yeah. I mean, election yeah. of his uh, yeah. cabinet. Indeed, uh, and look at Indonesia, the election of Jokowi to be the new president, the most significant thing is uh, it sort of breaks up the institutionalized political elite in Indonesia because uh, his opponent, uh, uh, Mr. Prabowo, is indeed a representative of the political elite, uh, no matter which party he is from. It's just that with Jokowi, who came from a, you know, a nobody's background, and with uh, a lot of popular support and, and so on. That, I think, uh, harbors well for Indonesia's future as a truly democratic example for the rest of Southeast Asia. Yeah. So I guess we have a lot to learn from our neighbours. <laughs> oh yeah, indeed, indeed. And they have a population which is, what, five, six, seven times uh, larger than ours, and yet they are a full-front uh, democracy. That's really admirable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's all for from us uh, today and thanks for joining our discussion at Durian ASEAN and I guess for the Menteri Besar of Selangor, whoever it is, uh, whether it's Khalid Ibrahim or Wan Aziza or whoever that will be holding the seat, um, focus more on getting the job done and get, uh, f- uh, restoring the faith of people in Selangor. So yep. anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.